Do you ever wish you got more credit for all your hard work? Do you ever focus more on what you've done than what God has done for you? Do you ever find that you have no room in your heart for the needs of others? Hey everybody, this is Steve, and God is the builder of all good things. This week's Gospel reading is a short parable about a rich man who decides to build bigger barns for his wealth and spend the rest of his life enjoying it all. This week's Epistle reading is about Christ tearing down the wall of hostility between Jews and Gentiles and building us all up into the Holy Temple of God. Links to both readings are, as always, down in the doobly-doo. So what in the world could these two readings possibly have in common? Oddly enough, architecture. In the Gospel reading, we hear about a man who was doing very well. So well, in fact, that he didn't have room to store all of his crops. So he decided to tear down his barns, build bigger ones, and spend the rest of his life taking it easy, eating, drinking, and making merry. And you may think, why not? He worked hard to make his fortune, he earned the right to retire and enjoy the fruit of his labor. Except the issue here isn't his retirement, it's what was at the center of the man's life, himself. You see, right at the start of the parable, Jesus makes it very clear why this man was so wealthy, because the land of the rich man brought forth plentifully. Sure, the guy needed to sow and reap, or at least pay others to do it for him, so some work was involved. But Christ is making it very clear that when you really get to the bottom of it, this man's wealth was not something he earned, but rather a blessing he received. And the man doesn't respond to this blessing with anything resembling gratitude. He doesn't offer thanks. He doesn't look for ways he can use this incredible wealth to help feed others. Instead, he plans to literally tear down his barns to build new ones to store all of his stuff. That's like having so many leftovers at a party that you decide to buy a bigger refrigerator rather than share some with your guests. So a parable that begins with a gift from God ends with a foolish attempt at self-reliance, with the rich man thinking, I have enough and I'm going to make sure I hold on to it so I can enjoy it for many years to come. But then God comes and bursts the man's bubble and lets him know that he's going to die that very night. And the rich man is face to face with reality. Just like God was the one who caused the lands to bear many crops, God is the one who gives us life. The man wants to tear down barns full of God's gifts. He wants to destroy the structure where God's blessings abound. And in their place, he wants to build his own new barns, built on a foundation of self-reliance, pride, and greed. And these barns, though literally full of stuff, in a deeper sense, turn out to be empty. In the epistle reading, Paul also tells us about how spiritual structures should be built. He writes about a house built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ himself as the cornerstone, a structure that will become a holy temple in the Lord, a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And this temple is built up because what preceded it has been broken down. Christ has torn down the dividing wall of hostility between Jews and Gentiles, opening the way for us all to be accepted as children of God. Christ tears down the structure built on a worldly foundation, the wall of the law that divided the Jews from the Gentiles. And he rebuilds a new structure on a new foundation, just as the rich man intended to do. But this new structure is not a storage unit for worldly things, but a home, a household built of the very people the wall once divided, a household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with himself as the very cornerstone, the first and most important stone in the foundation. We talked about what it means to truly be a temple back in episode two. To be the temple of God is to have God where he belongs, at the very center of our lives, seated upon the throne in our hearts. To clear out the clutter to make room for him to dwell. But this is precisely the opposite of what the rich man in the parable did. The rich man, in building these new barns, in planning on enjoying them alone for the rest of his life, was essentially building a new temple. Yet this was not the temple of God. 
It was a temple dedicated to his own wealth, his own pride, his own comfort. It was a temple packed so full of stuff that there was, quite literally, no room for God or neighbor or anyone else, failing to see his wealth for what it really was. A gift to be shared rather than an accomplishment to be hoarded led the man to build his own wall between himself and others. It ultimately made him not see other people as brothers and sisters in Christ, members of the household of God. By building up his barns, the rich man was tearing down the temple of God and rebuilding the wall of hostility which Christ had torn down. The reality is that Christ is both the architect and the foundation of all things that last, but we often fool ourselves into thinking that our own structures, our own big barns or dividing walls are eternal. We've covered a lot of ground today, and to help work through what this all means for each of us, we'll end, as we always do on Live the Word, with three questions. First, what are the walls in your life that keep you divided from the household of God? What needs to be torn down in your heart or your mind that prevents you from seeing everyone as a brother or sister in Christ? Second, when have you torn down God's barns by ignoring his blessings? When have you rejected God's gifts of grace and tried to build your own, bigger barns filled with worldly cares? Third, how has God unexpectedly entered into your life and caught you by surprise? When has he come to tell you that your life is actually his? And most importantly, how did you respond? We'll be back with a new episode on Monday, and my buddy Christian will have a response video up on Thursday as he wrestles with these questions. I hope you'll read the gospel and epistle passages we covered today. And whether it's with family or friends or a Bible study group, I hope you'll talk about what we've covered and wrestle with what God has for you in your life. Most importantly, I hope you'll celebrate with us this Sunday and every Sunday to hear the beautiful scripture readings proclaimed during the Divine Liturgy and to learn how you can live the Word. Thanks so much for watching and joining us on our journey. Click on our logo to subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And you can find lots more from us, including ways to donate, at our website, y2am.org.